let's stand to our feet. And let's just begin to open up our mouth and say something wonderful to Jesus. Come on, let's begin to give him the fruit of our lips. I don't hear you. Come on, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy, God, towards us. Uh, God, we thank you for this another day, God, that we have not seen before. God, we thank you, God, because you have allowed us, God, to come into this moment, uh, God, to come into this place. Uh, and we have thanksgiving in our hearts, God, and a praise on our lips on this morning, God. God, we are thankful unto you, and we come to bless your holy name, uh, for you are great and you are good. God, besides you, there is none other. God, you have no peace you have no competition uh, God we thank you on this morning uh, for what you come to do to us and through us uh, God we ask you on today uh, to let your presence uh, be our very reward uh, Father God in the name of Jesus uh, we ask you for nothing else on today but your very presence uh, God we know in your presence uh, there is fullness of joy and at your right hand uh, there are pleasures forevermore Father God in the name of Jesus uh, we ask ask you to saturate this place uh, with your very presence, uh, with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, we ask you, God, God, to stir up every gift uh, in this place, every anointing in this place, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, we pray, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, that you move from heart to heart and from breast to breast, God. God, let every need in this place be met. Uh, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, we decree and declare uh, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, that you get to have your way, uh, that you get the glory, that you get all the honor, and that you get all the praise. Uh, all of our worship flows to you. All of our praise flows to you. All of our adoration flows to you. You get the glory, uh, you get the praise, uh, and you get the honor. God, we thank you on today uh, for a breakthrough atmosphere that makes preaching easy. We pray for a breakthrough atmosphere that makes miracles possible. We pray for a breakthrough atmosphere that makes deliverance possible. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare, God, God, by the authority that you have given us as believers, that we will be set free. We will be delivered. Chains and fetters broken. Weights broken. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus uh, that the devil is cast out of our minds, uh, that the devil is cast out of our thoughts, uh, that the devil is cast out of our emotions. Uh, right now in the name of Jesus, uh, we decree and declare a freedom to worship. Uh, we decree and declare a freedom to praise. Uh, we will not be held back in our praise. Uh, we will not be held back in our, pro our worship. Uh, Father God, we thank you uh, on today for what you come to do. God, have your way. Uh, this is our earnest plea. This is our earnest cry that you have your way. Do what you will in our lives. Do what you will in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls. Father God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Come on, open up your mouth. Every person under the sound of my voice, open up your mouth and bless him. Open up your mouth and give him praise. Come on, you can do a little better than that. Come on, open up your mouth and bless him. Come on, open up your mouth and praise. Come on, open up your mouth in adoration. Come on, give him the strength of your worship. Come on, give him the strength of your praise. Come on, power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. I say, for the Lord is good. I say, for the Lord is good. And his mercies. His mercy. I said his mercies. God, we thank you. But we could have been dead. We could have been sleeping in our graves. We could have slipped into eternity. But you told the hands of death to behave. We thank you. We bless you. We worship you. And we honor you. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on. Come on. Come on, power. Come on, people of power. 
Open up your mouth and bless him. Open up your mouth and thank him. For the Lord is good. I say for the Lord is good. I say for the Lord is good. Come on, bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Hallelujah. 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 We almost there. We almost there. Come on, open up your mouth. We need 100 percent participation. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, bless him. Yes, come on, bless him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The temperature's almost right. The temperature's almost right. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. We thank you. These are the prayers of your people. Thus far, the prayers of your people. Oh, come on and magnify the Lord with me. With the clapping of your hands, hallelujah. And the lifting of your voice, help me to celebrate our great and mighty King. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love to praise Him. I love to praise Him. I love to praise Him.
praise and we magnify him in this place. Hallelujah to us.
Hallelujah. Anybody grateful for the lowly Jesus? A friend that comes at all times. A friend that loves at all times. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. I can't find no 
got a family, hallelujah. But no one knows it's like the Lord. I'm grateful for a friend that loved me at all times. Whether I was up or down, whether it was dark or light, whether I knew my way or not, he loved me. And he covered me. And he cared. And he healed. And he protected. And he saved. And he made way. Hallelujah. A friend that can love it at all times. A friend that covered. A friend that protected. A friend that healed you. A friend that bridged the gap, that stood in the gap. That continue to make ways. He continues to bless and he covers. Hallelujah. And we give a great prayer. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad today? You may be seated. But aren't you glad today that the Lord that you serve is your friend? I'm glad about it. He looks out for me. He takes care of me. Hallelujah. And I'm glad about it. I love him. Because he first loved me. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we are to rejoice. We are to rejoice. We are to rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Uh, we we got to move, but you, you, you really need to know how good you have it. You, you really need to know and and listen everyone in this room today and, and those that have joined us online uh, I'm sure we all have some things that we're dealing with in our private life whether it's in our body in our family finances or whatever but at the end of the day you really need to know how good you have it as opposed to others that have it worse than you <laughs> I met a young lady Thursday night who waits tables at Denny's to barely make enough money to pay for her hotel room. 20 years old and homeless. Ain't got nowhere to turn. Grandmama dead. Mama gone somewhere. And she cleans our mess for a tip to just have a place to lay her head. You really need to know how good you have it. <clears throat> I got home last night from Ohio and I got a phone call from a friend of mine in Jackson, Mississippi and he began to share how their church was doing in the community and I asked him I said is it really that bad because you know on the news you know the news has a way of making things look you know 
I, no disrespect, but you didn't you, you didn't get this much coverage in Flint. And, and and he sent me a video, Mother Loper. Uh, he got up and went to his faucet in his kitchen, and he cut the faucet off. And I heard him in the background say, "Do you call this bad?" It it looked like chocolate syrup coming out of his faucet. We don't know how good we have. <laughs> You know, and, I, and, I, and I'm not saying that to minimize what nobody is going through. But somebody out here today is in a worse predicament than you. And I said that to say that if God can bring you out of what he did before, then you've got to have consolation that he's going to bring you out of this. People, people want to talk about where they see my wife and I now, but I have to remind them where we were then. And if God can do it for us, your declaration ought to be in a little while. In a little while. God's going to do it for me. I don't know when, I don't know how. But my faith says in a little while. Hallelujah. So when I sing songs like, he's my friend, I have to sing with a declaration that my friend not going to leave me like this. I wish I had a witness. Friends look out for one another. Friends go to bat for one another. Hallelujah for three of you here today. God is on his way to come and see about you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We got to move. But I dare three of y'all to just wave your hand and say, come see me, God. Oh, come see me. Come to my job and see me. Come in my house and see me. Come in my mind and see me. Come in my body and see me. But just come see me. I'm tired of crying. Come see me. I'm tired of trying to figure it out. Come see me. I'm tired of being depressed. Come see me. Come see me, God. I don't like being like this. Come, come see me, God. I don't like feeling like this. Come see me, God. All right. Get a get a mic get a microphone for. Come on. Oh, you, oh, you don't want to come up here? It's hot up here, ain't it? Get her a microphone real quick. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just want to start out by saying good morning to everybody. Uh, I'm not the one to, to, uh, y'all can't hear me? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm just, as the pastor have taught me, I'm just going to let the Holy Ghost take my tongue. I didn't plan for this. Um. Start out by saying I drive trucks for UPS as a delivery driver, and um, somewhere during a delivery, I dropped my phone. And we all know how important our phones is. 
and uh, in way in secret, my delivery area is in secret. Didn't know where I dropped it. I didn't turn on, find my device. But needless to say, the next day, my supervisor walked up to me and said, did you forget something? And I was like, yeah, my phone. And he said that uh, he was going to get it. I mean, I could have lost it on the road. I didn't know where I dropped it at. I ain't really counted the phone that I lost, but I have so many numbers in my phone that I'd have never got them back. People from in where I'm from in Tennessee numbers and things of that nature. The phone wasn't cracked. It's, it's actually a pretty new phone, expensive phone. And I, that, that was one of God's blessings that he that I literally seen. I prayed about it and asked him to help me through it or what was I going to do. But the phone come back to me. Okay, so that, that, that brought me back to the message of wait a little while. He talk that, that he's teaching me. Okay, so yesterday I'm in the mall and from Boscov to the parking lot, I realized I dropped my wallet. Really no money in it, $20, $30. That, that wasn't the point, but I have a lot of sentimental things that was in my wallet, that like my mother's driver's license that she was so proud of because she, she drove 18 wheelers. That's, that was something across that uh, another family member, just sentimental things that was so important, not to mention my credit cards, debit cards, everything. So uh, we, I go back and I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm asking for the security guard, asking could they pull up the cameras to maybe see where I dropped it if somebody picked it up and, it, and it's just gone. As they told me, well, we can't look at the cameras. And you know, I was, 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 was ill and getting angry and they all made the comment, well, well, if I was in here stealing, you'd be looking at the cameras, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I, but I, <laughs> I, 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 I got, gathered myself back together and the whole time, honestly, God is talking to me, but I'm not even realizing he's talking to me. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to pray about it. Maybe, hopefully a good Samaritan will turn it in. Maybe tomorrow they take the money out of it, which is pointless to me. I count that for a loss. So the worst thing I wanted to do was go home and tell my wife I lost my wallet because she said I can't keep up with nothing. I, I, I had just lost my phone. Now, now two weeks later, here's my, my wallet. Okay, so we sitting there, and we had talked about it and had moved on. We started talking about something else, watching TV, eat dinner. The doorbell ring, and of course I took my hearing aids out. I can't hear nothing. I, my, my wife, she come in there and she got me. She said, "Come here." So I put my hearing aids back in, and it was this older lady, older lady, and she said, "I've been looking for you." She said, "She said." Got your social security number in there, honey. Take your social security number out of there. And she she told me that's exactly where she found it at, in the parking lot of Bosco. And she said, I live way in Magnolia. And so she handed me my wallet. Of course, my wife is white, but she wasn't giving that wallet to her. She knew them driver's license was not a white one. <laughs> So she, she handed it to me, and everything, the money, everything was still in my wallet. So what I done was I took the money out. She did not want to take it. I told her, ma'am, you just do not know. It ain't even about the money. And first thing she said was, I can put gas in my car now. And it, like, just touched my heart. She just took it all over for me. And, and don't even have gas to even do it. And it just showed me, y'all, since I've really genuinely tried to turn my life and live right and, 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 and live godly, it's just been an amazing ride. And I don't have any friends to tell it to, so I just want to share God's blessing with y'all. So, so, one more, one more.
one big thing I just want to say. Some members, several members in here know about me trying to get my wife to come to church, pray about it. Me and the pastor have talked about it. So what she said to me this morning, y'all, was, Nikki, I didn't get up in time enough to go to church with you today. But I'm going to church with you next Sunday because I want to go to a church. God is in that church you go to. That church. That church. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, you said, y'all sit down. You, you said, now, I met your wife. At the food line. You said your wife white. Right? Okay. Lesbian. Right? Okay. You've been trying to get her to come. But she ain't came. Okay. She said she's coming next week. That's what she said. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. Let me tell y'all. Y'all stop. Y'all stop trying to clean fish before you get them in the boat. Y'all stop trying to make people what you think they ought to be. And let God do the work. Amen. Amen. Don't nobody, don't, nobody, don't, nobody, don't nobody ask me later on today, did you hear her say she had a wife? Yes, I met her before. She's white. Mm -hmm. Looked like she's from West Virginia somewhere. I don't see why them two would connect, but that between them. <laughs> but she said she coming. Because God... I'm, 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 I'm going to get ready to help you. The Bible said, he that win them souls must be wise. When, when I saw them, John, like in the food line, I didn't go down another aisle, so I didn't see them. I, I didn't turn my back so I couldn't have to have conversation with them. I said, that, that's your wife? I hurry up, ran across the parking lot. How do? How do? She got she she got just as red she got just as red in the face as Mother Loper's jacket. She looked at Nikki and said, "That's the preacher." I looked at Nikki. I said, "That's your wife." And that was that was what about eight nine months ago, a year ago. And every time I see her, I said, "How's your wife?" Y'all don't like this kind of talk. That's, some of y'all cringing right now. And she said she coming. Like, like. And I, I'm just glad that we're a ministry where God can trust sending the least of his. Now, God, God can, and, and for all you just trying to figure out, I didn't know she was, what she was going to say, but it has everything to do with my message. I'm, I didn't change my message. God can deal with a try more than he can a lie. God can deal with your homosexuality. God can deal with your uh, a drug addiction. He can deal with your what? What, what, you, what you addicted to? No, go ahead and tell it. Go ahead and tell it. 
Look, you caught up in the spirit. When we in the spirit, we just let stuff out. Oh, you addicted to you addicted to sex? Oh, oh okay. Oh, oh, oh I, I thought that's what I heard you say. I thought you, he could deal with that too. God, whatever your proclivity is, God can deal with it. Watch this. If you let him. Not people, but him. You have to let God do the work. We try to clean folk up. We don't have the power to clean nobody up. I don't, I don't, I'm the pastor. I don't have no, I don't have the ability. So I'm trying to get my own self clean. God is going to send people here that don't need me. They don't need you. They need him. And with loving kindness, You, you, you mean you mean tell me you can't hug a lesbian? You don't you don't hug some lesbians in your day. You just didn't know they were lesbians. You don't you don't hug some homosexuals. Then all homosexuals don't talk like this. All homosexuals don't smack their mouth when they talk. People are getting ready to come to this church because they want to be free of whatever they're in. We're not going to alter the message. It's, a, it's somebody home right now smoking the blunt talking about that nigga sure talking right. <laughs> We're going to love them. We're going to love the hell out of them. We gonna love them back to life. I don't. They they were with me. I don't know how much money we got that girl. Um, I, I'm afraid to ask. But I posted on Instagram the other night. I, all my millionaire friends, all my thousandaire friends, and all my broke friends. I said, y'all send this girl some money. She's staying in the Motel Six. We going Folk been just sending me messages. I sent her a hundred dollars. I sent her a hundred dollars. I sent her a hundred dollars. If God can do that for a stranger, what you don't think God going to do for you and you connected? We just, we just have to be ready for what God wants to do. Now, as we go to Matthew 9, I do have, a, I do have something I want to ask you. What, what is it about working at the UPS now? $23 is a lot of money to me. I don't know how you talking about. Ain't no real money. <laughs> I mean, everything you said was good up to that part. I need everything I got. <laughs> I want to get to where you are. If you talk about $23, ain't no money. <laughs> if I lost my wallet, it was $2.12. <laughs> I'm believing God sent it all back to <laughs> We thank God today as we go to Matthew 9. For all of you God's children, we thank God for prayer, uh, to praise and worship, uh, to the musicians, to all of you God's children. Do, honey, do we got, do we, you, you got them gift cards on you today? No. No? Okay. All right. We thank God for all of you that are here and those, which camera? All of you that have joined us via social media. Man, listen, I, man, listen, let me say this. Thank you those that are joining us at home. I honor God and I bless God for y'all. Folk be blowing my mind who be tuning in every Sunday to hear little old me. I'm honored. I, I thank you because you could you could tune into anybody or you could still be uh, asleep because I don't know if anybody's like me. Cloudy, rainy mornings make me want to stay in bed. It's hard to get up. On, on a day like today, it's rough. I think we hit snooze about 12 times. <laughs> it's just rough. But, but thank you so much. Out of the bottom of my heart, I honor you, you and you, all of you um, that tune in via uh, Zoom um, stream. We thank God for you. 
Uh, let us get to the word of God. I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to Jackson, Mississippi, but I'll be going to Mississippi real soon. Um, and we're going to take some money. I'm not taking no water. I was talking to my, my friend last night and, and, and see a lot, a lot of times we see what we see and we don't understand what goes behind the scene. My friend's church. Uh, and it's funny. My friend's church in Mississippi, it's funny that people will take the blueprint of our ministry and God will blow it up. And I feel like we still here struggling in Delaware. Four, four years ago, my friend, Pastor Fred Stewart in Jackson, Mississippi, he took the blueprint of our church and the Hope House. He has a little small church in the hood. He, he bought a community center. His community center now is distributes 80% of the water in Jackson, Mississippi. Every major preacher in this country has come to him to see what they can do to help. He called me last night when we got home. He said, Cannon, I'm not calling you for nothing. I just need to talk to somebody that has a sober mind. He said, people are sending water. He said, it costs me $300 a day per forklift. Because when, when, when you send water like that, it don't just come like in cases that you get out of the supermarket. It comes on a pallet that's like this high. This, so you can't lift it. So, so you got to get forklifts to do this. You, you, $300 a day, three forklifts, that's $900 a day just for the forklifts not including the money you got to pay the person to drive the forklift. And you multiply that by the number of days that they're there. All we see is just send water. But we don't see the stuff that goes behind it. So I told him, I said, um, I said, no, I, 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 I got to ask you a question real quick. Now, I'll save you some money, but I don't know if I'm coming to Mississippi. Because the Mississippi, when I, when I think of Mississippi, I think of Mississippi burning. I think of, boy, I think uh, better be in the house before the sun go down. <laughs> he said, no. He said, everybody in Jackson black, you ain't gonna have no problem. I said, oh, I'm coming then. <laughs> so we'll be going down there. Um, I'm, I'm just at a stage in my life now, I'm just honored that somebody sees something in me. Yeah. And you will get that later. But when people don't see the value that God has put in you, God will raise up a remnant that will. So continue to pray for little old Bishop Cannon as I continue to do what I feel as though God has called me to do in these last and evil days. Matthew, the ninth chapter, uh, starting at the 35th verse, I'll read from verse 35 down to first, verse 38, if you will. Um, if you uh, feel like it, you know, please stand in reverence to the reading of the word. If you're comfortable, uh, if your gout has flared up, if your arthritis has a grasp on you, you may remain seated. Protocol is one thing, but it is the comfort of my senior members that are most paramount to me at this stage of my life. If my seniors are not happy, I'm not happy. If my seniors are not comfortable, I'm not comfortable. I don't care what seat you in. If one of my senior members said, get up, scoot over. I didn't get too many amens. Let me help you. Let me help you. Biblically, I have biblical context. When you take care of widows, God will take care of you. When you take care of orphans, I got biblical context. God will take care of you. I say it, but I need to demonstrate it. The widows in this ministry from this day forward should not want for nothing. The only way we cannot do for them is if we don't know. But if there's a need that needs to be met, 
and they let this house know. I don't care which one it is. We, we, have, we have several widows. Pick one. I don't care if they want to stick a bubble gum. You make it a point to go get them a stick of bubble gum. And you'll watch how God will bless you the more. Matter of fact, prophetically, uh, and if you don't know who the widows are, ask me after service. Uh, and after I chastise you, because you should know, I'll let you know who they are. And if you want to be blessed, especially you young women in here, if you want to be blessed, every chance you see one of them, you ought to ask them, can I do something for you? Y'all don't like this kind of talk, but this is good preaching already. Can I do something for you? Mother, I see some sweat on your brow. Let me wipe it off. Now, most of my widows are going to probably say, go on somewhere. But the sentiment of being a blessing will get you a blessing. Matthew, the ninth chapter, starting at the 35th verse. And Jesus went about all the city and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. The word of God is blessed. You may be seated. I want to preach from the subject this morning. Let's get to work. Let's get to work, Father. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would submit to you this morning, my brothers and my sisters, there is somebody on the outside of this church that needs what you have. There is somebody on your job. There is somebody in your neighborhood. There is somebody in your fraternity, your sorority, your club that needs what you have have. God will never put anyone through anything without leaving a deposit into them. And God does not leave a deposit in you for you to just hold on to it for yourself. We are in fact blessed beings, not just to say we're blessed, but we are blessed beings to be a blessing to someone else. The key to being blessed is to release all that you have as unto the Lord so that God can restore or refill or renew that which has been released. Watch this, in his name. In his name. When you do as unto the Lord, God will bless. This sermon this morning is not uh, a call to uh, increase membership in the house. This sermon is nothing more than a call to increase membership in the kingdom. I would that uh, this church would be busting at the seams. But because of COVID-19, you still have to maintain safe distance in the temple. So although I would that we pack out, I'm going to use a depth of wisdom, unlike some of my brothers and sisters who just pack people in churches like sardines just to have good church. Uh, we still need to have a safe space around one another. This is why we are now, we, uh, we, we thank God for Sister Cleo, uh, Cleopatra, because we have now started an initiative where we're going to uh, ramp up our streaming for those that uh, desire to be in the temple uh, but would rather stay in the confines of their home. If you cannot come, which camera, Cleo? If you cannot come to the word, the word will come to you. Hallelujah. So you'll start seeing some more things around here. Um, we're going to get these cameras, these tripods out of the way. We're going to mount cameras up. Uh, because we want to make sure we reach the people of God that need to be reached. The word of God 
uh, shall not come back void. Here we find this morning in the text, we find Jesus uh, doing what he does best, blessing the people of God. He had just raised Jairus, uh, ra raised the ruler's daughter. He had just healed the woman that the Bible said had an issue of blood. He had just healed uh, two blind men. He had delivered the dumb man by casting out devils, and he had been going around teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, not the gospel of denomination. Not the gospel of just high praise and authentic worship, but he preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. In other words, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. You must be born again. Mm, you must be born again. He preached that you can be delivered if you want to be. You can be kept if you want to be. He preached and he taught. And when God used his son Jesus, signs, miracles, and wonders followed. People from far and near heard about the miraculous hand of Jesus and the miracles that he began to wrought. They begin to come from far and near seeking what he had to offer. They wanted to be touched by the master. They wanted to be whole. They wanted to be healed because uh, if he can do it for them, then by faith he can do it for me. And as a side note this morning, I want to encourage every one of you in here, not that we are jealous or not that we are envious, but our declaration in this next season ought to be, if God can do it for my brother, then I know he's going to do it for me. If God can do it for my sister, then I know God can do it. If somebody in the midst of your church is being blessed, it's a clear sign that the blesser is in the neighborhood. Anybody ever hear the ice cream man coming? You don't, you, you don't hear the, 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 the dinging of the bell of the ice cream man when he is in front of your house. You hear that song when he's three streets over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to hear the music, your children begin to prepare themselves. Mama, mama, mama. Mama, mama, mama. And by the time the ice cream man gets in front of your house, your child, watch this. If your children have been pleasing to you, they now find themselves outside on the street waiting for the truck with the dollar in their hand. That's how you ought to be as a believer in Christ. When you hear God working a miracle in your church, you ought to get prepared because the miracle worker is somewhere in the neighborhood. And when the miracle worker gets to your house, you want to be outside waiting for the miracle worker with a praise in your hand ready for what he's going to bring to you. Jesus, the Bible says, was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. He had a human moment because uh, he desired to meet the needs of the people. However, he was yet one earthly man. And I don't have time this morning to get into this. Maybe one Thursday night we'll uh, talk about the trichotomy, if you will, of God. The trichotomy of God. God, <laughs> no matter what some of my constituents or some of my peers in the gospel seem to think, uh, there is only but one God. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. But God simply operates in three distinct offices. 
God the Father stepped out on the panoply of nothing and said, let there be, and there was. He created the sun, the moon, and the stars. He did. He put a, a food on the ground, and he gave dominion to Adam, if you will. He told Adam to run it all that I have created because he understood the, 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 the deity of God or the awesome power of God cannot be consumed within one being. Are you with me today? So he understood that no man can look upon God and live. His glory is just too good for one to consume. That's why he told the man that if you choose to see me, I'll just show you my backside. Hallelujah. But the world, the world got so chaotic and the world got so out of pocket that God had to turn his back on the world. The Bible declares that for 300, 400 some odd years, not a prayer that would be offered up to God would God hear. It's a terrible thing for God to put you at a place where he turns his back on you and he refuses to hear the prayer that you offer up to him. I wish I had a witness. Has anybody ever been there when they called on him but they did not hear an answer back? Uh, uh, but aren't you glad that one day God, even in who he is, uh, had compassion upon the world? And what he did was he went into his spirit and he pulled out flesh. God in the form of Jesus Christ or the Christos, if you will, uh, he sent him here on earth for one specific purpose, not to heal, deliver, and set free, but to point a sin-sick and dying world back to God. I got to say that one more time. Jesus did not come into your life to break you off something proper. Jesus is not into your life to give you a raise on your job. Jesus is not into your life to give you a new car or a new house, but Jesus is into your life to point you back to God. All of the accoutrements, if you will, that come along with him are simply byproducts of being connected to him. But Jesus comes out of spirit and he produces flesh. That's why we can understand that now in the text, he has compassion. He has a love for God's people. He wants to help everybody. It sounds like Bishop Cannon. He want to please everybody. He want to be everywhere at the same time. But he's only human. He, Deacon Rocky, I know you want to be everywhere at all times, but, but you're only one person. You, uh, Deacon Rocky has tried it before. He's, he's taking his wife to the doctor and he wanted to be with me and wanted to be at Lake Forest, but he gets frustrated. You're not God. You're, you're only one human being. And, and he has, I'm going to tell on him today, he has tried it. He has dropped his wife off. I don't even know if he put the car all the way in park. Just get out. I got to get to see Bishop. <laughs> get to see Bishop. Forget what he's supposed to come see Bishop for. Run late to pick up Agave from the school. Trying to do everything. But I wish I had a witness here this morning that knows that I don't serve man because man can let you down. I thank God that when God is in Dover, he can still be in Jackson, Mississippi. While he's in Jackson, Mississippi, he can be in Fort Knox, Kentucky. While he's in Kentucky, he can be in Washington, D.C. He's every He's everywhere at all times. But Jesus now has this compassionate moment that because he is from God and he is of God, he is still human. So he now calls upon his disciples. Walk with me today. He calls upon his disciples and he has this conversation with them. Uh, the ones that were commissioned to follow him. Uh, the ones that gave Gave up what they were doing to follow him. Uh, he says to listen here, children. Uh, there is an assignment that needs your hands. Uh, he says that the harvest is plenteous, uh, but the laborers are few. Uh, Jesus here at this moment ha, called them, and this calling demonstrated uh, the call to gather the 
sheep so that God can have his way. He wanted them to understand at this point we must embrace the heart of God. Because when you have the heart of God, you don't step over someone that has fallen down. When you have the heart of God, you don't leave folk when they go through adversity. But when you have the heart of God, when you find a brother or sister overtaken in a fault, the Bible declares you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself. In other words, it could be you outdoors uh, with no food or no clothes. Uh, it could be you uh, that have fallen on hard times uh, and just like you would have an expectation that someone would help you uh, you now are in the part of the helper. Uh, that's why we don't look down our nose at anyone uh, that has a need uh, because back by the grace of God there goes you. The other night when we were in the restaurant, I was not too consumed with the young lady's testimony of wanting to open up a business. My wife can help you and I can help you do that blindfolded. That's what we do. And I was not concerned with the fact that she needed a laptop. My wife had credit cards. I had credit cards. That's just what we do. But when she said I did not have a place to call my own, it was that moment that I was now moved with compassion. Why, Bishop, were you moved with compassion? Because if you ain't never had not a roof over your head, you wouldn't understand. If you had never been to a place where you don't know what, 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 where I'm going to lay my head tonight, you wouldn't understand. But I've been there when I didn't know where I was going to lay my head from one night to the next. I've been there when I was frustrated because I was angry at the situation that life seemed to deal me. And it's one thing for a man to be out there in the street. I just know how to survive. But a 20-year-old baby, God help me here. No, women ain't supposed to suffer like that. Contrary to what men think. And I got to help you women here for a minute. We thank God that y'all are some of the most independent women on earth. We thank God that y'all are able to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. We thank God that y'all got better jobs than you ever have before. But I just believe that you can blame it on the country boy in me. That women still got to submit to a man. I ain't gonna get too many amens here. I just believe that if a man can help a woman, not that they need the help, but it's our assignment to help them. And when you don't have help, God will send help. I ain't got no, I ain't got, I ain't got a dog in the fight. That men have disappointed your sister. But I came to encourage you this morning that help is on the way be still and know that God is God because beside him there is no other when you line up with the will of God and the way of God for your life you're not going to have to do it all on your own you're not going to have to play the part of mother, father, uncle, auntie, sister and brother just keep your hand in the hand of the master because the scripture says that weeping may endure for a night but joy is going to come in the morning Jesus now brings them to a meeting and he says to them there is enough people out here that need to be saved and I can't do it all by myself so I'm going to deputize all 12 of you yeah I'm going to give you an assignment in other words Jesus said to his 12 let's get to work there are folk that need what God has put in us so let's get to work three things in this conversation that I want to pull from verse 37 and 38 three things I'm going to holler and I'm out of here the first thing is who he called 
called. The second thing is who he called them to. And the third thing is what he called them to do. Can y'all appease me for the next few moments? The first thing is who he called. The text says he didn't call preachers. He didn't call evangelists and prophets. But he called laborers. Yes, he did. Jesus in the text didn't say pray for tithers. He didn't say pray for teachers or clinicians. Not for more choir members. Not for more another music. Position. Not for more anointing or more power. Not for more spiritual gifts and a greater vision. But he simply said, pray for laborers. According to Webster, a laborer is a person engaged in physical work for compensation, benefits, or an advancement. Laborers often do the heavy work requiring strength tenacity consistency and reliability that's what a laborer does but a laborer must have strength a laborer must be tenacious in other words if you are a laborer in the kingdom of God you understand that you cannot let a weapon formed against you take over your pursuit after God if you are a laborer in the kingdom you must be constant consistent in your pursuit in other words there'll be days when you get weary but the bible says be not weary in well doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not in other words you've got to hang on in there I believe it was the apostle Paul that declared that I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind me and I'm reaching forth to those things that are before I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God through Christ Jesus in other words a laborer has made up in their mind that for God I'm gonna live and for God I'm gonna die I'm gonna stay on the battlefield hurting on the inside but my feet are planted yeah I'm gonna stay on the battlefield tears rolling down my face but I refuse to quit I'm gonna stay on the battlefield my mind is everywhere but I refuse to retreat because God brought me this far and by faith I'm going to trust and believe that the God that brought me this far would never leave me nor forsake me a laborer is typically absent of being skilled or have adequate training they only have a desire they can get trained on the job in other words a laborer does not possess the know-how but of the heart and in the mind they have a desire to want to in other words I may not know Greek I may not know Hebrew can't quote Latin don't know the Pentateuch uh, but I know God I just want to help somebody because if I can help somebody along the road then my living shall not be in vain laborers get a reward while they work whether increased pain benefits even a promotion it is a direct result of the work ethic displayed when they thought no one was watching in other words on your job the key to going up 
is working when nobody's watching. The key to getting raises is doing more than everyone else as it is in the natural so too must it be in the spirit there is somebody that needs a word from the law you ain't got to be a prophet to prophesy you ain't got to be an evangelist to excite you ain't got to be an apostle to help lay foundation you just gotta say here i am lord use me for your service he called laborers to the field jesus begin to pray for the faithful uh, diligent and the industrious uh, carriers uh, of the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ uh, carriers to the example uh, of their word uh, carriers uh, through their actions uh, carriers uh, through their thoughts uh, carriers through their living uh, you preach Every time you come out the house, whether you take a text or not, you preach every time you're in the mall, whether you quote a scripture or not, because somebody is watching, somebody is looking, and somebody is waiting for us to shine a light in a dark, dark world. That's who he called. He called all of us to be laborers in the kingdom. Now someone asked the question, I know he called me, but what did he call me to? I'm so glad you asked. Jesus referred to the children of God as a harvest because they are people from God. They are people of God who were to be gathered at the appointed time. Yeah. That's why scripture says let the wheat and the tear grow together it is God that will do the separating. I got to get out of here. But it means to remove the crop from the ground that it had been accustomed to and assisted in being transplanted to another ground. We got to go into the world and live like God. We got to go into the community to live like God, to shine a light so that somebody can be brought out of darkness, so that somebody can come out from among them and be ye separated, saith the Lord. I don't know. We got to stop warning people to come to the law that we think need God. Yeah. Everybody needs God. You can't pick and choose who needs God. We all need him. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me the blood of jesus i heard i said i heard it reached to the higher highest mountain flows to the lowest lowest valley if the blood can reach and if the blood can flow ah! Everybody ought to have 
a chance for the blood. Yeah. Everybody ought to have a chance for the blood. Black and white. Gay and straight. Rich and poor. Everybody sick and healed. The blood has the power that my words don't have. The blood has the power that a praise won't get. The blood of Jesus will gather the harvest so that God can do, do the work. We must get ready to receive the harvest. I gotta go. But people may see you plow, but they won't see your blisters. People will see your work, but they won't see your scars. David, I got the clothes, but David, no one had to ask the question, were you a shepherd? They saw his clothes. They smelt his smell. They saw his mannerisms. And it made the people know what he was. When people see you, what do they see? Do they see a laborer in the field? Or do they see somebody that looks like them? If we're gonna be a laborer, we got to look like Jesus. We got to talk like Jesus. Love like Jesus. Can, can you love your enemy like Christ has loved the church? I got the clothes, but we come to realize who Jesus call and we come to realize what he called but now as I leave you got to know what he called you to do labor in the word the word is a lamp unto my feet the word is a light unto my path the word is a sustainer. The word is a keeper. And not only must I labor in the word, but I, I gotta be consistent in prayer. I don't just pray when I need, need the law. I don't just pray when I need a blessing. But David, David, he declared, daily will I seek after the Lord. Every morning when I wake, I pray to the Lord. Lord, thank you. I could have died in my sleep. Lord, I thank you another day to get it right. Lord, use me as a vessel fit for the master's use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got work to do. Let us get ready. Somebody needs what you got. They need the word in your belly. Cause I got out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let the river flow. Let the river flow to the nursing home. Let the river flow into the crack house. Flow in my neighbor's house. Slow so that somebody will be drawn to who Jesus really is. Say it. 
say yeah yeah Jesus said the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Somebody needs what you have. All that you've been through in your life was for such a time as this. Tests produce testimonies. Victory shall be yours. You've held your peace. And the Lord has fought your battle. Victory is yours. So stop walking like you're defeated. Do you know how easy it would be to tell somebody, I see what you're going through. And I want you to know today, you're not all by yourself. What you're going through today I went through 10 years ago. Because you do know there's nothing new under the sun. And if God can do it for me, then by faith, I just want you to know that he can do it for you. question was asked what qualifications does this little shepherd boy have to fight Goliath the Bible says he's ruddy and without of continents he smell like sheep it doesn't look like much How can he go up against this Philistine giant? David said, I don't need nobody to answer for me. I can speak for myself. You, you, you see this scar? A couple of months back, I was tending to the sheep and a lion came to eat of the sheep. I went to protect the sheep and I got this scar right here. But the lion is dead. I got a scar on my thigh about two years ago. I was out tending to the sheep. A bear came from up in the mountains to eat up of the sheep. I got a scar from my hip down to my knee. But the bear died. You see this scar, you can't see it, but it's in my heart. It come from feeding and protecting what I thought were sheep only to turn out to be goats. I got scars that you can see and I got some that you can't. What, 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 is all that, what, what does all that mean, David? I'm so glad you asked. The scars on my body simply suggest 
that I've gone through some things that could have taken my life. But I'm still here. By the grace of God. And in fighting all these. And God can keep me. Surely this giant got to fall too. What are you saying, Pastor? Some of y'all got scars today. That the enemy tried to take you out. But God kept you. Some of you got some scars that are visible. And some of you got some scars that cannot be seen. But you're here. For some of you today, even those that are home right now, that's, that ought to be a matter of fact. I, those of y'all that are home, which camera, Cleo? For those of y'all that are home, just type it in the chat. I'm still here. The devil tried to take me out, but I'm still here. I got some scars, but I'm still here. Some you can see, some you can't, but I got them nonetheless, but I'm here. My scars remind me that God is with me. I got to say it as I take my seat. Y'all, let's get to work. Let's get to work. When God put you in company of people that need what you, you you think for one second God let you go through what you've been through for nothing everything that you've gone through everything you're going to go through God allowed you to go through it to strengthen your walk with him somebody needs what you have And not just for my older members. Some of you single parents in here, somebody needs to know. You ain't got to go get a man for every bill you got. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. You don't need a man for your bills. You got Jesus. I got single parents in my church that I'm so proud of. Putting herself through college. Raising their children. Starting businesses, raising their children. Tell somebody you don't have to compromise. Just trust God. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways. I got brothers in here. You don't have to go back to the block to be successful. You don't have to go back to the streets to be successful. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. I got men in here raising their families. They don't dip out on their wives. They ain't going to talk back to me. Good godly men. I looked at them today. They look like preachers. My God. One of them started smiling. One of them tried to slide into the closet. Yeah. Encourage them. Encourage them. It ain't a lot of us in the church. Let them know they're doing a good job. You can make it. And I got to say it again. Stop picking and choosing who you want to share your testimony with. Somebody needs what you got. Give it to them. I'm done. I'm tired. Jesus said, there's a whole world out here. It's enough folk that don't go to nobody church. I don't want nobody to go to somebody else's church. Go back. Go back where you came from. Oh, I'm not going to get too many amen. Go back where you came from. Get it right. We don't, te we don't teach that no more. Go back and get it right. I was talking to a pastor the other day. He said, I don't want nobody back. I said, hey, some stuff you did wrong, some stuff they did wrong. Now, you don't want them back, 
because you feel like they did, did them wrong, but they bought your Cadillac three years ago. You took the Cadillac. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. We want relationship when it's conducive for good times. The f- Don't tell me you're in a relationship with me and hard times come and you leave. That's not relationship. You don't leave something because you disagree. Some of y'all in, uh, what's it, what's it, uh, not platonic, what's the word I'm looking for? Not platonic. In relationship. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. You go in the bathroom one time and you done left the relationship because he squeezed the toothpaste from the center and not the end. Ain't nobody leave when you left the toilet seat up. No. No, you don't, you don't leave because rough times come. I say it about every three weeks. Go to talk to some of these women that have been married 15, 20, 30, 40 years. Ask them how, long, how many times did you go in the bathroom at night and the toilet seat was up? How many, time, how many times did you use the last roll of toilet paper? I'm trying to use some stuff that's just like. You know, ain't no way in the world you can be married for 50 years and never not use the last roll of toilet paper. How long y'all been married? How many times you eat the last slice of cake? Last slice of cake. No, you the wrong one. Never mind. Never mind. I can see Deke. Hey, it's slice of cake and I want it, but do you want it? How many times you got mad at God because God ain't moved when you wanted him to? He didn't leave you. So you can't leave him. Sometimes God got you in the fire because he's burning some stuff off. But then other times, he needs to mature some stuff that's already in. You ever bake a cake and the whole kitchen smelled like cake was done? You open the oven door, the cake looked like it was done? You shut the door back, what the cake do? Fell. Because the outside looked like it was done. The whole kitchen smelled like it was done. But the inside wasn't done. And sometimes God got to keep us in something a little while longer. Because you look like you straight. Put a little perfume on. Smell like you straight. But the inside. It's work to do, y'all. Y'all heard it. I, I, you you don't never talk when you come to our church. You, let me tell you something. Her lesbian wife, I said it. Yeah. If anybody got a problem with her having a lesbian wife, you holler at me after church in my office. My office hours are from 9 to 5. I ain't make it up. She said it. Her wife. Protestant. Lesbian. Wife. Sit on the third row. We ain't got no mourners bench here. We ain't call her in the office and say, you know, you can't be no lesbian. You can't have no lesbian wife. Let her come to church. The only problem I got is you, you, you don't value $20, $30. I got a problem with that. Other than that, we'll work everything else out. I'll put a value on money, honey. With love and kindness have I drawn. You, 
If you ain't got nothing good to say to her, don't say nothing. It's all right. Because she still got a soul. Now, I just want to make sure I was correct. You said your wife, where's she from? Tennessee. From Oh, okay. Your white lesbian wife told you what this morning? God was where? And where's she coming? Uh-huh. Uh, when y'all, uh, is she coming next week, right? She, pro- she promised you. You tell her, I said, when you go home, said the pastor said, the Bible said, it's better to not make a vow than to make a vow and break a vow. You tell her, I said, I want to see her white lesbian self in my church next Sunday. And I want y'all sitting next to each other. Now, ain't no holding the hands. You ain't boodle up. I don't want you. Hey, look, I don't want to be preaching. She in the parking lot. I know I did. I don't want you hugging her in the pew. I don't want to be preaching and sweating. I look up and you all laid up like it's my baby. We know who she is when she comes. He that with his souls. Now y'all are laugh. Y'all are laugh when I tell the drug dealer to come because you think the drug dealer got money, but you're looking at me with the side eye when I tell the lesbian to come. Come on now, who the hypocrite? Who the hypocrite? All souls belong to him. I don't care what you are. I care what you desire to be and where you desire to go. That's the problem. That's the problem with our church now, the African-American Pentecostal church. We're busy making folk what we think they ought to be. You leave, you leave the lesbian alone if you play in the Powerball. How about that? Or you want to pick on somebody? You leave the lesbian alone, you dip in snuff. How about that? How about that? Okay, y'all don't like this kind of preaching? You leave the lesbian and the homosexual alone, you lying on your taxes. Them kids ain't yours. Them kids ain't yours. Oh, oh, y'all want to come for me today? You leave the homosexuals alone and you buying food stamps. 50 cent on a dollar. Now, I'm talking about y'all. If y'all happen to know somebody got some, I'm just saying, thought I'd put it out there. You, you know, I just thought I'd put that. You know, y'all got the problem, not me. Like, y'all got, y'all got the problem. <laughs> we got to get to work. Everybody got a soul. This ain't a black church, this is a church. This ain't a Pentecostal church, this is a church. We was talking in Columbus the other day. And when we go to Columbus, I'd be real uncomfortable. Me being honest. I, when, I go, when we go to Columbus, I, I'm real uncomfortable. Because everybody in Columbus, they like, they come in with their Brooks Brothers suits on and their Taylor suits. And they're, and they're they just, they, they just polished, you know. And they, they just learned and they talk about the cosmosis of the vortex that transcends beyond Y'all can have all that. I just want to be me. And I want to tell a world out here that needs Jesus. Not a doctrine. Not a denomination. They need Jesus. We're going to live like Christ would live. Wait, watch this and I'm done. When folk were coming to Jesus getting healed, when they were coming to him getting blessed, he didn't ask, what denomination are you? When the woman that had the issue of blood, the Bible said he felt the virtue leave. In his spirit, he picked up that she was coming. He didn't turn around and say, hey, wait. Mm-mm, you Methodist, don't touch me. No, he didn't do that. The one that had the withered hand, withered hand meaning he probably had a stroke. You know, when you have a stroke, you muscle. He, he, he didn't say, are you apostolic or Trinitarian? He just said, Stretch. He didn't say, do you lie? Do you tell the truth? 
We got to stop asking questions of people. Because they look like sin. But you are sin. If you can't embrace a sinner, you have transcended from saint to hypocrite. Now, Bishop, Bishop J.O. Patterson Sr. said this in 1989. He said, he was talking about witnessing in the community. He said, I don't mind that you come to church with smoke on your clothes. You just not have to come to church with smoke in your breath. <laughs> when you talk to sinners, you ought to hug them. I don't mean to be vulgar. I don't mean to be dis. You, what you mean you can't smell like, they smell like sex, Pastor. I can't hug them. How you know what it smell like? I, I, I want to say something so bad. Because see, some of y'all, some of y'all, I kind of lost some of y'all today when, when, when Nikki said she got a wife. And see, some of y'all was caught off guard. First of all, it wasn't none of your business. That girl come to church, she wants something from God. And God going to give it to her. That's my, les that's my lesbian member. I, pro I proudly talk to bishops and pastors. When we had conversations. They'd be like, yeah, doc, I got doctors to go to my church. I got lawyers to go to my church. I got city council members to go to my church. I said, that's nice. That's nice. I said, they give good tithes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, they bought me a Mercedes two years ago. Yes, yes, yes. I said, man, I got, I got hoes go to my church. I got lesbians. I got homosexuals go to my church. I got drug dealers go to my church. I got strippers go to my church. They don't bring me no Mercedes. They don't bring me no Cadillac. They bring me heartache. They bring me headache, but I love them all. <laughs> Some of them get on my nerves at times, but I love them all. Cannon, how you got that at your church? Same way you got them at your church. The difference is I know you don't. Because some of them doctors is being bent over too. You just look past it because they give good checks in the offering. And as long as you're looking past somebody's issue, you can't help them with their issue. It's work to do. It's work to do. And we're going to do it in this church. I'll be doggone if I'm going to go to Columbus, Ohio, and through the power of God, help to change a young lady's life. Doggone if I'm going to go to Flint, Michigan, and Cleveland, Ohio, and, 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 and Jackson, Mississippi, and, 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 and Florida to change people's lives. And I not do it in the, in the city that I reside in. We're going to help folk. We're going to go back to the old power. We're going to go back to the hotel power. Remember the hotel power, Mother Walker? When, when, when you didn't have stipulations, you just had a need and we helped you. You didn't have to go to my church and we help you. The reason why I stop helping some folk in some churches is because I think your pastor ought to be able to help you if you go to their church. The only reason I don't help people to go to other churches now is because if you go to a church, I don't want that pastor calling me thinking I'm helping because I'm trying to steal a member. I don't, it's enough folk out in the street that need God. But if you got... All right, let us pray. See, this is when you got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost said, all right, that's enough. Harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. God, we thank you today for the harvest. Our prayer this morning, God, is not for houses and not for cars, not for promotions on our job, not for more money. But we have one simple request. Give us wisdom to handle your harvest. Give us strategies today to handle your harvest. Teach us how to be laborers, God, that we will no longer look past people, but we'll look at people. Teach us how to love again, God. 
Yes, you delivered us, you saved us, you brought us from a mighty long way, and for that we thank you. But somewhere, God, between our dysfunction and our deliverance, we've forgotten what compassion really is. Give us a compassionate spirit once again that we will do what it is assigned to our lives. When the opportunity God presents itself to anyone that hears my voice today, word our lips, orchestrate our actions so that we can minister to your harvest. Let them come in off the streets, God, crying, what must I do to be saved? Not what I got to do to join a church. Let us shepherd them in being disciples of you, God. Not so that we can brag about how many's on the roll. Somebody's hurting today, God. Anoint us afresh, God, to be able to comfort them where they are so that we can help lead them to where they need to be. I pray for every believer, God, under the sound of my voice, meet the need in their life. Help prepare them, God, for the harvest. Just like one day, God, when we were a part of the harvest, someone came and picked us up. Give us that same strength and power to do that for someone else. Before I close this prayer today, God, I want to pray for that man, that woman that has a special request. A petition that they have up for you, God, that no one knows about. Touch them, God. Hear their prayer and hearken to their call. Pray, God, that you meet every need in their life. God, before I close this prayer, I pray that from the north, the south, the east, and the west, God, we pray that you will send men and women to this part of your vineyard. Let them come in off the streets asking, what must I do to be saved? Let us mirror what good Christian disciples are so that they can be transformed or changed. In the name of Jesus, meet every need in our lives. Go with us, God, as we leave this place, but not from you. Until we meet again is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you all. See you next week. Amen. Real quick, y'all, let us keep Sister Tish in prayer. Uh, Lord will continue to uh, touch her body. Amen.